Footnote number 12. You have heard that music is a universal language. It sounds like a nice slogan, but problems start as soon as we start thinking about how to say certain words in that music language. Well, let's try to find some words. You might remember that Robinson Crusoe first taught these two words, yes and no, to his new friend Friday. But he didn't explain how he did it. And come think about it, how do you teach a complete stranger what's yes and what's no? Well, the music language can help exactly there, because when we communicate with a stranger we use face expressions and body language. And music can mimic those tools. It is clear that this pattern from Mozart Symphony No. 41 sounds affirmative. Therefore, we can call it yes, while in minor key, these same consecutive notes mean no. Of course, in Mozart Symphony No. 40, here we have a whole debate around no. While in Beethoven's case, this no is very decisive and it offers no debate. But if you want a debate in Beethoven, you will find it in his seventh symphony, in the first movement. It goes very optimistically. But very soon it will start getting a little bit anxious. Why? Because it is too optimistic. People usually start getting anxious when something is too optimistic. This symphony is already in major and there is a danger it is already in major and there is a danger that it will be missing minor key moments. Fifth symphony had plenty of them and therefore symphony wants to develop into a direction when it will say that it will have some minor keys as well and there is just one place here in the first movement, and it is in the development section. Therefore, the symphony says on this place very clearly, no, this symphony will have minor parts too, yes, but only in the second movement. No, there will be some in the third movement, yes, but only in the second movement. No, there will be some also in the fourth, in the fourth movement. Let's see those happenings in the fourth movement. No, this is the third, third, the third movement. Well. You might think that I went mad, but I didn't. That's how they talk in a third, in a third, in a third movement. They often debate, they often debate in a third, in a third, in a third, in a third movement. But you can see that this no isn't a clear no. No, it isn't. It is rather some kind of a doubt. Listen to violins in the background while Woodwind instruments also say no. And then we will soon reach the fourth movement, in which we will have a very specific kind of no. Obviously, this movement starts very affirmative. Very soon, this will start to go into the similar direction like in the first movement. After having a few beers at the party, this symphony wants to go home, but there is no way to go home. And this negation is in contrabasses, you can hear it even when these cheerful horns return, contrabasses still keep saying no. And the only way how the rest of the orchestra will resolve this is by grabbing contrabasses and taking them along. That's the only way they could say yes to this no at the end of the symphony and that's why it will of course finish with 
and then comes Antonin Dvorak. Sometimes, even after the best party, there comes a moment like this. It is time to fight for something. They say that Dvorak's Seventh Symphony is about the fight of Czech and generally Slavic people against the German influence. But let's contain ourselves within the symphony and the symphony obviously wants to fight for something as a symphony and this is still the first movement this is still the first movement however there is a voice in the first movement that wants to fight already and this voice will soon start putting a pressure around everything putting a pressure around everything it will go over and over, it will go further and further. But then another voice, starting from the violins and getting lower and lower in the orchestra, will say, not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet. It is still the first movement. The symphony has four movements. It is too early to fight. We should first have one very beautiful second movement. Sorry for a little DJing with Mozart, Beethoven and Dvorak. I use only their material. And then, after this beautiful second movement, we have the announcement of the fight in the third movement and since it is a scherzo here we have a waltz and this waltz will say no to something it will say no to something Beethoven was saying a similar sort of no. And now Dvorak says something very similar. And here we announce the fight that will ultimately happen. And there comes this, this finale, this second beautiful theme, the victorious theme from the finale, which says that whichever the symphony was about to fight for, the fight has obviously succeeded. It is in major, it is in a clear rhythm and it says yes, it is quite obvious.